and Penrose, if I <coughs> don't misunderstand, is describing something similar. Quantum superposition states that span large numbers of neurons, uh, if not your entire brain. Whereas, um, and, and I don't believe that for a second, personally, but the reason I would say maybe C in the poll area was that I, I could imagine that um, the, the state of um, a particular set of atoms, you know, and, and they're affecting a particular molecule or whatever, could, you know, there could be some kind of trickle up effect mm -hmm. without Penrose, Penrose's ideas having any relevance at all. Yeah. I mean, you can imagine all kinds of things coming into it, chaos and yeah. and stuff as well as a as an amplification mechanism. Yeah. Uh, of course, the real question is why consciousness should have anything to do with quantum mechanics in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's not obvious at all that if somebody were to start stating a theory that consciousness is due to electric charge or the presence of an element wolfram, yeah. everybody would just be laughing at. It's just that quantum mechanics is mysterious enough uh, to appeal to a lot of our kind of folk intuition mm. that consciousness has to be something that very mysterious. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be an inherent uh, similarity between consciousness and quantum weirdness. I think the, the, there's, there's only kind of, there's, there's one point I'd make to that, which is that, uh, I mean, we still do have this problem with the measurement problem. Whether or not you take it away from the observer and try and explain it with decoherence, it's still there. And I think being able to um, <coughs> simulate consciousness um, using quantum systems would be very a very interesting um, thing to do. I mean, yeah. That's just um, using it as another means of information processing. Mm -hmm. with, with, with consciousness, if you were, if you were like having a, 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 an emulated brain in a bunch of qubits, would it be exploring all the possible neuron states and so on? So well, that's, that's would it actually be linking all the thoughts? Yeah. It wouldn't necessarily, some of them would be very nice thoughts at all. That's one of the questions. I mean, what what role does the observer play in... So how would it feel to be in brain? Instead of being... Yeah. Yeah. Well, if your brain states are evolving according to uh, a typical uh, whole brain animation model, each of these brain states in the supermassive would be feeling like a just like normal. It's just that it happens to thinking that it's particular not. It's just that some total is of course thinking all possible and possibly possible. It's the question of if you were showing in this cat, what would you feel <laughs> in the same position? It's not just that, it's like, you know, if, if you were to think all the possible thoughts of your brain could be, the number of thoughts that were ouch are fairly large. But the, I mean, again, so it's, it's, the yeah, I mean, yeah, so the distinction here is, of course, that Penrose is talking about coherent quantum states where the phase information is maintained. Obviously, the brain has to follow quantum mechanics because that's our most fundamental theory of reality. So, consciousness does have to have something to do with quantum mechanics for it to exist in this universe. The distinction is whether it uses coherent quantum information. Mm. Yes, yeah, I agree. Because essentially decoherent quantum information it just comes down to mechanics. classical information. So yeah, but the but the mechanism by which that happens is, is also well, I think that's I think the whole most people would say decoherence mechanism. explains that problem quite nicely. Mm -hmm. Most physicists these days that sort of think about this thing tend to uh, disregard the like Copenhagen interpretation and Yeah, yeah, no I, I agree. But I mean I personally don't think decoherence solves the whole problem. I think it, it does move the difficult questions away from, from what you're trying to calculate. Right. Well, but then I think Edward's many work is going to be the proper mm -hmm. Well, actually, I think, um, oh no, that, it's, uh, yeah, I've got to slide on that in, in a little while. I'll just go through, this, uh, this was just something I wanted to show because I found it um, in a paper last week and it was very interesting. It's an experimental proposal to put um, a small object, it's small but it's not a quantum object, it's a virus, in a quantum superposition of two states. And I think if the experiment worked, it hasn't been done yet, it would be the largest um, object of this type that would be put into a macroscopic quantum superposition. And the way they do this is by using an optical cavity and um, uh, electric fields to actually hold the virus in place because it has, um, it's, it's actually a dipolar a bipolar thing, so it can it can actually be lined in the field and held in place, and then you can you can um, apply some um, some pulses to it 
which which make it into two into two energy states of actually of its mechanical motion. So the way to think about this is is almost like it's in um, two places at the same time. It's resonating and it's not resonating at the same time. So this is kind of like quite, well, I think this would be quite an interesting experiment to do. Again, it's the idea of scaling up the quantum coherence to um, to. I think the title of the paper was something about um, towards um, quantum superpositions of living organisms. So again, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. And okay, so here's here's the main point of the argument, which uh, we kind of deviated from a bit. Uh, but this this is quite important, so I just want to stress it. There's two ways we can look at it. Either Penrose is correct, and we cannot simulate the brain with a sorry that should say classical computer. And then we can do it with a quantum computer because he's saying, okay, it's just quantum effects. Anything that relies on quantum effects, we can simulate with a quantum computer. Or he's wrong, and we can simulate the brain with a classical computer. Then we can potentially still simulate it with a quantum one faster, or we can find new and exciting applications for quantum brains and quantum objects as we scale them up and try to um, use them in things like neural networks. So I personally think that this is a win-win situation. Uh, either way here, quantum computers are, are quite useful. And also I should say that I'm not, I don't consider point D to be, to be um, well, if, if, you, if you consider D to be your viewpoint, then these two don't apply. But if you don't, then... Science doesn't apply. <laughs> yeah, then, then science doesn't apply, and cause I, well, I'm a scientist, so... Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, then this this was the point we actually came to a bit earlier, which was to do with the um, different interpretations of quantum mechanics. And this is just a final point, really, that quantum computers might be able to help us answer some of these deeper questions about the nature of reality. Um, there are different ways of interpreting quantum theory at its deepest and at its foundational level. There is the many worlds interpretation, the Copenhagen interpretation, and then there's some others such as the De Bruyne Bohm interpretation. Each of these has its own problem associated with it. The many worlds, people will just invoke Occam's razor and say, you know, it's wasteful of the universe. Um, <laughs> Occam's razor applies to rules, not the universe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's about the simplicity of the fundamental rules, not the amount yeah. of stuff in the universe. Because yeah. yeah. they, they came up with that problem when they, when they discovered all these new galaxies, and it's like, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, I mean, but that, but that is fundamentally the problem with this many worlds idea. And then the, you have the Copenhagen interpretation, and the problem of that is people don't like the idea of a, the observer playing a role in the physical law. It just doesn't seem intuitive. Not to mention there's this whole collapse thing. Yeah, the collapse. Out of doesn't, doesn't actually so then there are other theories like this um, this De Bruyne Bohm interpretation where nothing actually collapses, the states always uh, are always maintained as a zero or one, but they just behave as though they're in a quantum superposition. And there's like what's known as a pilot wave which guides them. Now, the problem with this is it's kind of like passing the quantum book because you, you move away the problem from the particles being in the superposition to some magical wave that we, we have I think no you evidence. You call that an, a, an, a, an angel because that's like the classical yeah. thing. You, you were saying, oh, we don't know what to do, so angels did it. Yeah, yeah. So, so each one of these obviously has its own problems, and none of them are ideal. And physicists re get around this problem by invoking decoherence, which it does solve the problem, it allows you to do the maths, but it doesn't really make the fundamental issue of the interpretation go away. And the problem is, we do not fundamentally understand the nature of reality. And hopefully, if we can build quantum computers, they may be able to help us answer um, some of these questions, because they'll give us systems that are able to mimic reality on a scale that we just haven't been able to um, do up to, up to now. Um, so how, how to proceed, this is basically just wrapping up. Um, we need to improve the hardware and reduce the problems with decoherence. We need to work on algorithms and get more ways of actually mapping real world problems onto quantum computers. We need to commercialise what's currently available, even though it's a very young field, because we need uh, more awareness and funding in this area. And then there's obviously the very exciting uh, merging of quantum computing with um, 
and to make new technologies such as quantum neural networks and merging with the field of AI and machine intelligence. And like I said, there's virtually no commercialization in this area done at all because, I mean, why